most of Sangomas they've been produced by that church. Had you not gone to that church, do you think that today you would have a story such as yours? Even the albinos, they've been killed because of they knew their part. Did you then continue to go to that church while you were Sangoma? They used uh, the body part of successful person so that they can make you successful. They are not my ancestors. What a thrilling topic that we had on I've Been Through the Most. Pakisi came and shared a riveting, interesting, yet heart-wrenching story. We have him today on I've Been Through the Most podcast. Welcome. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. <laughs> so good to see you again. Thank you. Now, thank I'm you. curious. Okay, this episode. Woo! Hey. What an episode. <laughs> Let me just tell you. <laughs> like, when I think about your episode, all I'm hearing is like, the secrets. <laughs> These are the secrets, you know? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, how was your life after you were on the show? Mm -hmm. Did you get any slack for everything that you spoke about on the show? Did you get phone calls? Did you get threats? Did you get fans? What happened? Uh, mm. Mm. Yeah, nah. yeah. I think I did not get any threat. Okay. The only thing that I received, it was calls from many people asking for help, other way inviting me to their churches. So thread, no, 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 no one, no one, no one. I think for me it was just such a beautiful story because I think there's such an opportunity to show the grace and power of God, especially yes. with something that is so deep, like ancestral spirits, or yes. having moved from, I can call it um, a covering, because you were under a different covering, and now you're a Christian, you're born again. Just that transition itself and the shift was a huge and a big deal for you. So for people who did not watch the episode, which I would advise that they do, um, can you just take us through your journey and what Upakisi had gone through? Okay. Um, in short, I can say everything was moving well, smoothly, without any problem. But when time goes on, um, things started to change spiritually. And as you know that everything starts in the realm of the spirit. So after things has changed spiritually, they affected me physically, uh, financially, and all sorts. So I can say that I grew up as a normal person without any challenges uh, besides that one of seeing things and coming to past. Yeah, but... Like, it isn't like a gift of seeing visions yeah yeah and yeah. you're having dreams so you you did have an evident gift from a young age yeah okay yeah yeah sometimes i'll say things randomly joking and those things will come to pass you see so i do not know that it's a gift i was thought that's ah, just a coincidence i've never knew that i've got that gift until i grew up and start to attend church that's where they told me that i've got a gift but they told me at first they said I've got a, a prophetic gift. Mm. But when I grew up spiritually, they said no, it's an ancestral gift. Those gifts is from my ancestor. So and my sons, my <coughs> sorry, my ancestor, they want me to do. They want me to do uh, their calling. Uh, like uh, to continue where they have left off. Mm. This is where mm. I I mm. think I paused a little bit when I yeah. watched your episode that. You were told that you have a gift of ancestors in the church. You were, you dreamt about church members. Yes. And you went to church. Yes. And then you attended church. And yes. then in church, they told you who you are called. I mean, that is unusual. I think that for me was a big shock. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I thought, Uguti, you know, church and, you know, Ubusangoma, they don't sort of come exactly. together. But exactly. then... If a pastor tells you you are called for that, I think maybe it's the type of church. It's not your normal charismatic church. Right. Um, so you said you went to, to ZCC, so that's where they prophesied who are you. Yeah, yeah. So, they, so you're saying that the church believes in ancestral callings and they believe in you being a Sangoma. They, they believe that. They believe it's, it's, it's aligned to what the church believes in. Yeah, but not exactly because of they mm. forbid us. They were forbidden us to go to Sangoma and to consult. 
Okay. But somewhere, somehow, when prophets prophesy, they will say, this is from your ancestors. Like, they'll never say, that said the Lord. Or sometimes they don't prophesy with the Holy Spirit. They call the name of the, of the founders of the church. That said, mm, mm, ooh, ooh, mm, ooh. Mm. not that says the Lord. God once showed me that those people, they are not operating with the Holy Spirit, but with their familiar spirit. And those people who are prophesying or who are prophets that side, they are also a Sangomas, actually, because of the, they are using the same spirit as Sangomas. Because they believe in ancestors. And yeah, but they don't believe per se. Like a, they operate yeah. under the same spirit. Yeah. I think they just identify it differently or they want you to believe that they're identifying it differently, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. I think they know exactly what the spirit is. I think they tricked us. They say our ancestors are our angels. So we consider ancestors as angels. No, we were considering. Them. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you, I think you born again now. You yeah. yeah, but I think a lot of people um, see ancestors or people that passed in their in their families or whatever as angels. I think. Um, on, on a light scale, you know, there's a light yeah. scale of saying my mother passed away, and because she's not on physically on earth anymore, yeah, she's an angel. She, she's like an angel. Yeah, that's a light-hearted way of saying it and believing it. But then yeah. there's a deeper one where it's like you don't see her as an angel. You actually, she see her as a as god. A god, you you begin to and, worship and, and, and you talk. Be, you you believe that they are able to make things happen for you on earth. This is why certain. Um, I don't want to say procedures. What do you call it? <laughs> um, certain things are done. Rituals. Rituals to speak to ancestors because people believe they're able to make some things happen on earth because of they they pass the angel stage. They are on a godly level to some mm -hmm. people, right? So, but I don't oh, want worship. us to make the episode about, about that, the specific yes. church. <laughs> uh, because it's not about, it's, 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 it's really not about that. It's, the church is part of your journey, right? Yeah, Where yeah, you were prophesied, yeah. you have a calling, and you were never really like a church person. You became a church person, and then the church says you have a calling. And then in that calling, you found out that you actually have a calling from God. You are mm. actually called by God, your calling is 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 bigger than that. So please just enlighten us. Enlighten us because you 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 clearly spoke about it in your book and also in the episode how you felt the presence of God and how God sort of like took you out of that. So I'm trying to figure out at which point because you were not like a church person. So knowing God with within that process, how did that happen? Uh I think it was not a real God. Uh, even the presence of God that I felt at that particular time, mm. it was not a real presence of God because of God once showed me or revealed to me that there is also a counterfeited Holy Spirit. There mm. are many churches that are operating with counterfeited Holy Spirit. The so, so for those who don't know what that means, please can you just... Um, elaborate or explain it to us in layman's terms yes mm. uh we have got god the father god the son god the holy spirit so devil also make himself a god false god and we've got and we have also have false christ and we also have false holy spirit but there's a thin line between a false holy spirit and a counterfeited i mean there's a thin line between a counterfeited holy spirit and a true holy spirit because of most of the time a uh, counterfeited Holy Spirit al al almost do exactly what Holy Spirit do. But the difference is it will tell you the truth, but not all truth. Jesus said when the Spirit comes, it will lead you to all truth. So counterfeited Holy Spirit, it leads us to truth. Okay. Yes. So you speak about, you al you, like you always refer to it, God revealed to me. God revealed to me. Yeah. So, Yes. So I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to get to is when did God start revealing things to you? And when did you know that you have that kind of relationship with God? Mm, at first, the revelation was from false God. Then after I got born again, I got a revelation from the true God. Mm. Yeah. So anyone can get a revelation from God or from false God. 
so it will depend where you open a lifestyle which kind of church are you attending yeah but majority of people they've been led by this counterfeited holy spirit they got revelation from this false god or false holy spirit so you think it's god but it's actually not yeah mm. or you you think it's it's the holy spirit and yeah, it's not exactly. so it's it's basically what the bible says that says uh, uh, many will say jesus jesus but not everyone you know will enter the kingdom of god because not everyone is actually hearing the voice of god exactly. um there's so many false prophets in in this day and age and that people have to have a discerning spirit to be able to know which one is true and which is yeah, not yeah. and i think that if you truly seek the lord he reveals himself to you because exactly. he says those who knock on the door the door will be open those who seek me they will find me exactly. um that's what i truly believe in but i want us to talk about your journey of when you were still operating as a sangom i know you shared such detailed detailed <laughs> things and events yeah. that happened i mean you were saying at some point you were like a cobela which mm. means that you were qualified to train other people because you were just that good in yes. fact the person who was training you was found that they're not even strong enough so they had to go find another gogo or someone who is strong in order to handle the person that you were take us through that yes and the reason why i was like that not that i'm strong just that at that particular church that church so as i was a prophet at that church so when you grew spiritually that side you become an sangoma and a strong one because of i think it is where how should I say most of sangomas they've been produced by that church mm, many yo. people mm, mm. yeah men uh, maybe 98 or 99 percent of sangomas they will they will tell that they were once been part of that church that because is of, an interesting revelation yeah because of uh, the injunction they are the ones that are pulling those ancestral spirit to us mm. Mm. so if you are not part of that church so obviously those spirit won't come near you but once you you go to that church and other churches also sorry yeah that is where you'll be attracting those spirit but had you not gone to that church do you think that today you would have a story such as yours yeah i think today in the club again a different story because of even to go to that mm. church it, it in, uh, remember i saw a vision seeing uh, people from that church so when I, I wake up my spirit was longing to go to that church so that's where my journey started i think they've called me to that church the god of that church is the one who called me so even when i get there he said to me my child it is me I'm the one who called you. Mm. So, and the Bible said, those who believe in him, they have so, be I mean, those who believe, uh, they will be baptized. But that side, we don't believe. We just could get ba uh, baptized without even believing in Christ or anything. So, okay. So, yeah. since it starts in the church, you get, you get prophesied and they're like, listen, you have a calling. You need to get initiated in this and this. Do you continue going to church then as a Sangoma? Or it's like, it's done, peace, bye. It's a different kind of thing that I'm doing. You mean right now? No. After you get initiated, okay. you're a Sangoma. Remember you were prophesied in church yeah. that you have this gift and yes. you went and yes. got initiated. Did you then continue to go to that church while you were a Sangoma? Nope, I left the church mm. and focused on my ancestral calling. Yeah, even though at once I do not want to be initiated, but because of ancestral way after me, so they attack me in all angles. So I end up giving up in and going there. I mm. think that's another thing that I really want to touch on is what happens when somebody has a calling per se you know as they say like an ancestral calling people get sick you lose your job everything goes wrong and you know all these signs are like yes it's because you're not accepting the gift and i've heard this story so many times from so many people i've seen people drop out of school because they are failing each and every subject yes. they are getting sick and then they tell you the solution is to answer to the call 
So I know you mm. shared a little bit about your story and how also your marriage, you know, ended because of the calling as and well. You're losing your job and, and losing, losing your job. So did so all those things. things like um put fear in you and did, did they inform your decision to actually um agree to to follow the call to be an Isangoma? Yeah. I don't think there's anyone who will say when I grow up I want to be a Sangoma. Because of being a Sangoma at first it was something that will cramp our style because of I grew up maybe as a chess boy or something. So being mm-hmm. a Sangoma it was ah no. But because of devil operate that way, so I end up give up in. And I think on job God also exposed how devil operate. By the time God led a uh, devil to attack Job, so that whatever that uh, that strategy that devil use on Job, it is exactly the same mm. strategy that is still using on us when we don't want to worship ancestor, which is him also. Mm. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So many bombshells, and I think for me, I'll tell you what stood out for me in in your episode. Okay. You spoke about Sangomas using bodies mm. right? body parts body parts yes and you also spoke about them stealing fetuses so women who have gotten miscarriages or who have done abortions and they would use that for muti and you actually made a bold statement to say there are no sangomas who don't use or strong or good sangomas who don't use body parts yeah i think because of sometimes we are not uh, we don't listen to God. On the Viticos or the Deuteronomy, under the laws, he said, do not go to those people, to Sangoma, because of they will defile you. So many people, they don't understand how are they going to defile us because of they are helping us. So they defile us because of uh, their operation or their help. It seems like they are helping us but they are putting us more into bondage, especially mm. a spiritual bondage. Like that one of, let's say, someone can conceive. So obviously they help you with a fetus, but when I, uh, you don't know about that. So that is where Moloro will be defiled. And then, I guess what I'm going to we were not going to a hospital and still. No, obviously there are nurses that are working there. Yes. Yeah, so they can sell those things to us. So even we don't go and steal. Obviously there are people there. Who work there. Yeah. And who sell it. So it becomes a, a criminal case, yeah. <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. Because now you, you're selling people's bodies without their consent. Obviously, um, they're no longer here. Their but without the consent of, of their family or without their knowledge. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that are un- unethical and that are done that are really just... Exactly. So scary. Yeah. But yeah. they are happening. Yeah, they are happening. Even though people they don't believe it. They think I just a myth or something else. And other one uh, it is those one that they were murdering people, not Sangomas. Mm-hmm. People can murder people because of uh, a body part from someone who like a Pajeloro in Chijuemotoapela, it is much stronger than Pajeloro from a, mm. a mug. Yeah. What? Yeah, serious. That's how it is. The fresh one, you want to speak louder, even the blood. Yeah. So you, so people actually take out body parts from people when they're alive because they believe that those body parts will Are be stronger, more powerful than of somebody that is dead. Yeah. What a mm. brutal, brutal thing. Yeah, that is why this day, see, Babala Yaba, two people have been killed. Even the albinos, they've been killed because of they need their parts. And you spoke about it on the episode as we close, lastly, because we're going to speak about your book. But as we're wrapping it up, you spoke about that the white people and albinos, because they believed to be rich um, or to have more money, you know, their body luck parts, um, of some sort. people have luck and they'll, they'll have money. That's what people believed. Albinos, 
uh, Wawelagara category are the white people. Okay. So if they can't get the white people, they will take albinos mm -hmm. because of uh, skinny sabwana like ukareke sama huaker. Not exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying what albinos are white people. Yes. Yeah, but uh, they can serve the same purpose. Yellow road, the police are white because of as you already said, or a majority of white people are not poor, are not cursed. Most most of them are very successful. So they use uh, the body part of successful person so that they can make you successful. They can't take someone who's poor and try to make you poor. Though those ones that are poor, they also use their body parts, but not as that one of white people or albinos. Mm. Yeah. Paki, so yeah. they are not my ancestors wrote a book and I think we'd really love to give one of these away yes. to um, deserving subscribers if you know that you're deserving of this please do go ahead on the comment section below make sure that you're a subscriber you've clicked on that subscribe button you have watched his episode because you guys <laughs> actually demanded a part two and we knew that we we're going to bring him back on the podcast yes. because you are just that amazing and your yes. story is that powerful and big ups to you for being bold courageous and fearless to be able to share your testimony you are now born again you're now a child of god <laughs> and um, your life has completely transformed and transitioned from and being a sangoma yeah. to being an amazing uh born again child of god god bless you for that thank yes you, and I, I i think for me before we wrap it up you know we have to do this i think there's a lot of people who are, are finding themselves in this probably same situation and they're like everything in my life is falling apart i'm being told i have a calling i don't want to accept the calling this is all too confusing this is not what i want yes i acknowledge i have a gift but i don't think this is where my gift is leading me to you know so people just want people want answers people want solutions you know and they're like okay i relate to your story because most of mo most of the people in the comment section are like i have been through that too you know but obviously not everybody is brave enough to share their story and that's okay it's not meant for everybody to share but for when how can we help somebody who, who is finding themselves in a crossroad and they're like i need help i need advice and i don't know where to go from here and i don't want to die because you know what they say yeah. if you don't accept the call at the end of the day and the fear of death is what makes people now do something they don't want to do hmm. Yeah, I think that why it is very simple. The first step is to run to Jesus. Because of many people, they don't want to be initiated, but their lifestyle, by uh, lifestyle, or they're initiated. Many people, they are fighting against ancestral spirit, which is devil, which is the kingdom of, of darkness. But still, my dear, in totally swift. Like, if you want to overcome darkness, Firstly, you have to go into light mm. and never and stop doing things of the darkness. Mm. That's the first thing. And yeah. once you are in the light, darkness will not get you there. Come on now. Serious. Mm. But people will do other things, but behind the scenes, they do other things. But beside that one, they can call me. I can help them. But the first thing, even those ones that already called me, I said to them they must find a church. But the worst part is this church. Mm. Not all of them that they are using Holy Spirit. Many churches, sorry to say this, but many churches, even born again Christian churches, mm. they are using cultivated Holy Spirit. Mm. There are many people who are using ancestral spirit. Because of Lena, how can that church mm. to other church, which is. <laughs> 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 it's a story for another day yeah <laughs> it's not a word and a faith-based church so you have to find yourself a word-based church and a exactly. faith-based church so i think that's the first and very important first yeah. and very important thing and i think you've wrapped it up quite yeah. nicely because you said you know we we have two options choose light or darkness but i tell you choose light and exactly. thank you for that yeah the darkness will never outshine the lights exactly Woo! Ah, I'm here for the lights. I'm here for, you know, <laughs> for, um, Jesus, for, for Jesus, for your life transforming. And as Inno said, we will be giving a book away, a book or two, depending. So you guys, please comment below. Tell us why you want the book, why you want to read the book. And then we're basically just going to choose people and then we're going to send you the book.
just motivate. Thank you <laughs> so much for tuning in to I Have Been Through the Most podcast from myself, Innocent. And myself, Millicent. It's bye, bye for now. now.